So the city of Fort Thomas dropped off some Christmas trees to us a couple days ago. I haven't seen them. Uh, Tim, if I understood Tim Reynolds correctly, they dropped off about 250, and they told him it was about half of what they had. And I couldn't help but be a, a little sad about one aspect of it. That means that at least 500 people in Fort Thomas took down their tree and decorations the day after or maybe two days after Christmas. Now, don't get me wrong, people are free to do what they want with their Christmas trees, you know. But for years, I, I see fewer and fewer people really celebrating Christmas. Christmas Day becomes the end of Christmas season for people instead of the beginning, you know. So a couple days ago, a couple, in the morning, I was driving early to the, the gym, and I was thinking, how could I get people interested in celebrating the days of Christmas, these uh, days during the Christmas season? So a song occurred to me as I'm driving along, you know, and I got a couple verses, and I finished it as I was on the treadmill. I thought I'd share it with you. I'm sorry. I should, just in case some of you don't know, so there's all these feast days after the day of Christmas, right? Like 26th is the feast day of St. Stephen the Martyr. 27th is the feast day of John the Apostle, the Evangelist, the Apostle Jesus loved. Third day is the Holy Innocents, Thomas Beckett, the fourth day, etc. You know. Now. On the first day of Christmas, the Christ child gave to me, Martyr Stephen, to pray for me. On the second day of Christmas, the Christ child gave to me, the apostle whom he loved, and Martyr Stephen, to pray for me. On the third day of Christmas, the Christ child gave to me, Innocent children, martyrs, the apostle whom he loved, and martyr Stephen to pray for me. On the fourth day of Christmas, the Christ child gave to me, Bishop Thomas Beckett, innocent children, martyrs, the apostle whom he loved, and martyr Stephen to pray for me. On the fifth day of Christmas, the Christ child gave to me, the Holy Family. Bishop Thomas Beckett, Holy Innocence, the Apostle whom he loved, and Martyr Stephen to pray for me. On the sixth day of Christmas, the Christ child gave to me the first Pope named Sylvester, the Holy Family. Bishop Thomas Beckett, Holy Innocence, the Apostle whom he loved, and Martyr Stephen to pray for me. On the seventh day of Christmas, the Christ child gave to me, Mary, Mother of God, the first Pope named Sylvester, the Holy Family. Bishop Thomas Beckett, Holy Innocence, the Apostle whom he loved, and Martyr Stephen to pray for me. On the eighth day of Christmas, the Christ child gave to me Gregory and Basil, Mary, Mother of God, the first Pope named Sylvester, the Holy Family. Bishop Thomas Beckett, Holy Innocence, the Apostle whom he loved, and Martyr Stephen to pray for me. On the ninth day of Christmas, the Christ child gave to me Genevieve the Virgin, Basil and Gregory, Mary, Mother of God, the first Pope named Sylvester, the Holy Family. Bishop Thomas Beckett, Holy Innocence, the Apostle whom he loved, and Martyr Stephen to pray for me. On the tenth day of Christmas, the Christ child gave to me Elizabeth and Seton, Genevieve the Virgin, Gregory and Basil, Mary, Mother of God, the first Pope named Sylvester, the Holy Family. 
Bishop Thomas Beckett, Holy Innocence, the apostle whom he loved, and Martyr Stephen to pray for me. On the eleventh day of Christmas, the Christ child gave to me Bishop John Neumann, Elizabeth Ann Seaton, Genevieve the Virgin, Gregory and Basil, Mary, Mother of God, the first Pope named Sylvester, the Holy Family, Bishop Thomas Beckett, Holy Innocence, the Apostle whom he loved, and Martyr Stephen to pray for me. On the twelfth day of Christmas, the Christ child gave to me Magi from the East, Bishop John Neumann, Elizabeth Ann Seaton, Genevieve the Virgin, Gregory and Basil, Mary, Mother of God, the first Pope named Sylvester, the Holy Family, Bishop Thomas Beckett, Holy Innocence, the Apostle whom he loved, and Martyr Stephen to pray for me. So I didn't just sing that for you to be singing it, but after Christmas comes all these feasts, and not all of them are placed there specifically by the church. Some are, the first ones are. Stephen, we have no idea when Stephen died, which is usually the day we celebrate the feast day of a saint, but he was put there for a reason by the church. And St. John the Evangelist was put there for a reason. The Holy Innocents, put there for a reason. Now, uh, Thomas Beckett would be there normally, and so would St. Sylvester, you know. But Epiphany is put there specifically. Mary, Mother of God, is put there specifically um, to be in the Christmas season. But there's all, all these saints that come. And, you know, as I say at the end, and martyr Stephen to pray for me, that doesn't mean only Stephen to pray for me, but all those lists of saints, you know, and feasts are for our help. And you might ask yourself, why do we have all these feast days, you know, and why do I want you to celebrate them and pay attention to them? I'm not wagging my finger at you saying, you should be celebrating Christmas until, you know, no. I'm inviting you. I'm saying, there's a treasure here for us. And it, it begs the larger question, why did God give us so many feast days, so many saints? There's a line, uh, Bishop Barron, in one of his books, says, I, I like the way he puts this. Out of a prodigy of goodness and the desire for the salvation of all. Is it necessary for our salvation to celebrate St. Stephen's feast day? No. It's not even necessary uh, for our salvation that we celebrate Mary, Mother of, of God, you know. Is Epiphany necessary for our salvation? No, no. Strictly speaking, all we really need for salvation is Jesus, right? But out of a, a prodigy of goodness, and you guys know that word, it, it, uh, pro in Latin, forward or forth, agere, to um, drive or toss at, you know. And so to be prodigal is to just throw everything forward. And we usually use that word to mean wasteful, you know. But it can also mean lavish. And God wants to give us all these helps to salvation, you know. The Catholic understanding, the Catholic religion is not bare. Okay, here are the bare necessities. You need this, you need Jesus, so just take Jesus. No, he, God gives us all these people to pray for us, all these examples, you know. Stephen has a different message for us than Thomas Beckett than the Holy Innocents. John the Evangelist has another message for us. 
St. John Neumann, a, a Saint, another message for us, another way that might inspire us, you know? St. Catherine of Siena, St. Therese of Lisieux, St. John Paul II, Mother Teresa, all these saints, there are just so many different ways for us to come to God. It's all through Jesus, right? But Jesus is there, and he's throwing out all these other ways that will eventually lead us to him, which will, and he will lead us to the Father, you know. And so we have a few days left in the Christmas season. Uh, I just invite you maybe to think about it. I know some of you have the Magnificat or Word Among Us, or you can just go online, you know, and discover the other riches of Christmas. Discover the other ways that through God's lavishness we may come to celebrate and come to know our salvation.